Hey there, in this video, I am going to show you how to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to get actual leads. Now, most of the other videos on YouTube show you how to use Sales Navigator to get sales prospects. And now having a list of sales contacts is great if you are looking to get actual leads, and that is people that are interested in your products and services, then I want you to keep watching. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the exact five five-step process that my team uses and that we use with our clients to get actual sales meetings on our calendar to pitch our products and services. So let's dive straight in. So our goal with this process is threefold. First, we want to get a refined search. That is the LinkedIn sales navigator search that we are going to use. It's going to have that list of prospects that we want to reach out to. Second step is you actually want to connect with these people on LinkedIn. I know that there's various other ways that you could maybe scrape the contacts that are in Sales Navigator or potentially send them an in-mail, but we're not gonna use that approach. We want to connect with them. And then number three is to actually get them onto a sales call or a meeting so that we could learn more about them and actually pitch our products and services. With that said, step number one is to create a refined Sales Navigator. To search. So when I use the word refined, I simply mean a very filtered search that only has our ideal prospects on that list. That means we're going to have to do some filtering and some editing using Sales Navigator to get that very refined list with our ideal prospects. And this list is going to form the base of everything else that we're going to do in the following steps. So I really want to take some time here with the search and let's actually dive into creating a search together. And you can see how me and my team actually create searches for our clients as well. LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I want to navigate over to Lead Filters. This is where we are going to create our refined search. I'm going to show you really the only filters that you need to add in order to get a really good search. I'm going to keep it very simple. You don't need to complicate this. So the first thing we're going to add is the current job title. Here, I want to add the exact job titles that I want my leads or prospects to have. So here, I want to look for people that have owner and founder on their profiles as their current job title. By putting it in inverted commas, I am telling LinkedIn that I want an exact match. That means I only want people that have exactly owner and founder on their profiles. So always think about these quotation marks or inverted commas as exact match. Highly recommend you put those in. The next thing that I want to have a look at is the industry. So for this, I want to look for people in the professional training and coaching industry. LinkedIn has a wide variety of industries that you can select from, which is awesome. And they're constantly updating this list. So have a look at the industries that you really want your prospects to be in. So here I chose professional training and coaching. Next, let's select the geography. What location do I want these people to be in? You can go as narrow down as targeting certain cities, but but in this case, I do recommend that you have a look at a country. So here I'm going to say United States. That is going to give me more opportunity because I'm going to add some more filters. It's going to give me more opportunity and really more prospects to target. The next thing that I want to have a look at is the years in current company. What this is going to allow you to do if you are targeting owners and founders is this is going to tell you actually how many years they've owned the business. So years in current company, I could say, I want people who are a little bit more established that have six to 10 years in their current company. So you can utilize this to really filter. And the next thing that I want to filter and potentially you want to do is company headcount. This tells you how many people are in their current company. So if I'm an owner and founder, how many people do I have in my company? You can select this as the company headcount. We have a lot of people that are self-employed, one to 10 employees, 11 to 50 employees. We utilize this filter a lot and it is great for targeting either smaller companies or larger companies. So maybe I only want to target people that are self-employed or that have one to 10 employees. Company headcount is a great filter to use. Now, this is a special trick I want to teach you. So we, right now we have about 2,500 results. So 2,500 people that fit the parameters that we are looking for at the moment. 
A trick that I want to show you is how to target people that are active on LinkedIn. Because what we see here, all of these prospects, they may or may not be active on LinkedIn, right? They may just have a profile that sits there and they don't do anything with it. So in order to target people that are active on LinkedIn, you're going to head over to the spotlight section. And I want you to select posted on LinkedIn in 30 days. This is going to show you people that are active on their profile files or active on LinkedIn. And you can see this has now narrowed down the search to 960 results. And these 960 people are active on LinkedIn. The next thing that I want to make you aware of is this keyword section. What's great about this keyword section is we are going to utilize it to exclude certain people that I don't want in my list. This is truly going to help make this search more refined. So what I want to do is I want to scroll through here and have a look at are there any keywords or titles that are coming up that I do not want to include in my search. For example, I see here founder and branch director. So I might want to exclude directors from my search. Also very often, I know that when I'm targeting owners and founders, sometimes assistants pop up in the search and we don't want assistants. So I'm going to utilize the keywords at the top to add not keywords and not simply means I'm going to exclude these people from my search. So I'm going to type in caps, not I'm going to open my parentheses and I'm going to add these keywords that I want to exclude from my search. So I saw director in there. I'm going to add the or I could say interns. I don't want to include interns in this or any assistance. Okay. And I'm going to close my inverted commas and I'm going to search this again. And let's see how many people we now have. Now we have 300 33 results so we can see how many people it's excluded people that had director or intern or assistant now this is an extremely refined search and i'm going to challenge you to refine it even more go through probably about the first 10 pages of this list and of this search and see if there are any other titles that you want to exclude and if these are your ideal prospects okay so keep going through this the first 10 and if you see anything that pops up that you do not want to target in terms of titles or keywords, add them here in this keyword section, continue to add or, and then whatever keyword it is that you want to add. Okay. So that's truly going to help you build a super refined search. And if I just have a look at how many people we had previously about 300 and some, these are 333 prospects that are owners and founders. They have six to 10 years in their current company, the size of their company, either they're self-employed or they have one to 10 employees located in the United States in the professional training and coaching industry. And they are active on LinkedIn. That gives me such a great great refined search of these 333 people that I can now reach out to on LinkedIn because I know that they are my ideal prospect. You don't have to waste time with seniority levels, past job titles, and some of the other filters that could be applied here. These are truly the only ones that you need to have an effective, refined, and simple search. So now that I've created my refined LinkedIn sales navigator search, step number two is to send connection requests to my ideal prospects. The best way to convert somebody from a sales contact, which we have a whole list of that we created in Sales Navigator, into a lead is for us to connect with them to pitch our products and services. So the next step in the process is to send connection requests to my ideal prospects. You can decide to manually connect with 10, 20, 50 plus prospects every week, or you could even hire a virtual assistant to do this manual process for you which I highly recommend. Our team actually helps business owners automate a lot of the manual process of getting leads through LinkedIn. So I want you to click the free download right below this video and grab that resource. Step number three is to create a spreadsheet to keep track of your leads and prospects. Reaching out to all of these prospects, sending them connection requests and trying to manage a lot of this can get very complicated if you don't have a simple way to track your leads and your prospects. So I created this 
simple lead tracker that's gonna allow you to keep track of where every prospect is in your sales funnel, and it's gonna make it a lot easier as you are managing this process. So here is a simple lead tracker that we created that you could also utilize when you are managing your LinkedIn outreach. So I have the date, the first name of the prospect, their last name, their LinkedIn profile URL or link. Did they accept my connection request or not? What is the status? So the status could be a cold lead. Maybe they've asked you for more information. Are they a warm lead? Maybe they're interested in your product or service. No longer interested. Maybe they said follow up with me later. Maybe you just sent the connection request. So you could update the status and of course customize this based on your business you can add any notes from the prospect as well and then we have the different follow-ups so follow-up one two three and four and here you could simply add the dates for when you followed up with the prospect follow-ups are super important so you could keep track of your follow-ups in this manner as well so very simple but effective way to keep track of your leads and prospects and that takes me to step four which is to keep track of the status of each each prospect in your lead tracker. And I mean it, you wanna keep track of every step. Trust me, this is gonna be super helpful. Every time I send a connection request or somebody accepts it, or I send them a message on LinkedIn, or I'm even following up with them, I want to keep track of every touch point that I make with this prospect. And you can easily keep track in your lead tracker. So the key here is to get into the habit of always updating the status of every lead in your lead tracker. Because if you're trying to manage this entire process through LinkedIn and in your LinkedIn inbox, it can get very tedious and very complicated and overwhelming. And I really want to simplify this process for you. And that takes me to step number five, which is once they accept your connection request, send them a direct message. If somebody has accepted your connection request, that's a good sign. We now want to move them through our sales funnel and actually send them a direct message to pitch our product and service with a strong call to action for them to get Get on a call with us. Now, let me give you the inside scoop. I hear a lot of common rebuttals about cold messaging on LinkedIn, like, I hate being pitched on LinkedIn or I never respond to messages like that. But the truth is when done correctly, cold messaging can be a game changer for converting sales prospects into qualified leads that then turn into clients, right? The main goal is to get paying clients in the door and cold messaging is the strategy and the way to do it. At my company Pima, we use this exact process to get meetings with our ideal clients every single day. And we're also helping other businesses fill their calendar with meetings using cold outreach and cold messaging. So trust me, when done correctly, cold messaging works. It is one of the most predictable and reliable ways to get sales, meetings, and appointments on your calendar. So with this fifth step, once they've accepted my connection request, I'm gonna go in and send them a direct message, a cold message on LinkedIn, and I'm gonna pitch my product and service with a call to action to get on a call with me. And this cold message could be as simple as identifying a pain point or problem that your prospect is facing and giving them a specific outcome that they can expect when working with you. Maybe it's an increase in revenue or helping them land a dream job. And remember, you want to end with a clear call to action to get on a call with you. So if you followed this exact five-step process, you have taken somebody from just being a sales contact through LinkedIn Sales Navigator to the point where they are a lead, somebody that is interested in your product and service, getting them on a phone call and then of course converting them into paying clients. Now most cold outreach messages on LinkedIn do not work and I understand why people hate cold messaging or cold outreach. As a direct response marketer my team and I have done so much testing on cold messaging that actually works and I want to show you the exact formula that you can use to craft cold messaging on LinkedIn that produces results. So I want you to watch this video next where I show you that formula.